All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Podtagon. We are now going for part two of this week's segment of Yeah or No. So again, we're going to be look at, talking about five, let's just say, somewhat risky, controversial subjects that I think some of the some of the followers have definitely been asking to have addressed. Um, mm-hmm. So we're going to get, and we've got some really, really good ones today. I'm really secretly, I, I kind of prefer these ones even to the last ones we did so i'm quite looking forward to getting to the meat and bone of this so just a quick intro um as always we're with the one of the best friends of the channel uh antoine from making the walk mma thanks again for joining us here yeah yeah of course of course anytime there's an opportunity to cause disruption I'm, i want to be a part <laughs> of it <laughs> that's that's all that's all we're here to do just troll and make people as angry as possible that's what we live for <laughs> All right, so without further ado, we'll get straight into this. Uh, We'll do the same format as we always do. Guest goes first. So topic one is, now we talked a little bit about weight cutting in the last one and about potential penalties that should be incurred for fighters that miss weight, uh, whether on purpose or, or accidentally. So I thought we'd take that question a little bit further and ask the question, should we just ban weight cutting altogether and should fighters be forced to fight at their natural weight? What do we think about this one? This one, this one's tough. Um, I would say no, I think that um, weight cutting should still be there, but I think that there should be um, um, some sort of regulations in place and, and the UFC kind of loosely does this in a sense um, but there should be regulations in place to make sure that people aren't cutting too much weight for instance when uh, when Anthony Johnson uh, um, rest in peace uh, was cutting weight down to welterweight good lord why in the world would that man cut that much weight that's not his even leg healthy. looks like a welterweight yeah like he's he looks so much better at light heavyweight and so Mm -hmm. you know things like that where it's not you know i I know people bring up weight bullying but to me if you make the weight you make the weight um Mm -hmm. but um but when it becomes a situation where it's just unhealthy for the fighter and they they start missing weight at just religiously just every time that there's a fight people are talking more about the way in than the actual fight itself um i think that they should be forced to move to different uh to a different division and the ufc loosely does that but i think the weight cutting should still be there because i believe that that's part of the fight i believe that that suffering that they have to go through to get to that way in you know we've often heard that that is the first fight that they must uh get through and i think that that's just part of the entire experience so i don't think it should be banned but i think it should be monitored very closely uh, to make sure that these fighters are fighting at a weight that is optimal to their performance and to their health yeah yeah no that's a that's some really good points there um i think again i was thinking along very similar lines uh and i'm very much leaning on the side of no purely again we're talking about something that's very very impossible to police you know as long as as long as there are weight divisions in existence which there should be of course because you don't the last thing you want are fighters going in there that can be completely different weights because you'd have a bloodbath on your hands pretty much every time if that was allowed to occur um so as long as there's weight divisions which there has to be there's always going to be weight cutting um i will say this though um, <clears throat> I think fighters fighting at a natural weight is more safe for athletes, which is something you've talked about and alluded to there about making sure that measures are in place to make sure that weight cutting is not done to dangerous levels because we, you know, there have been studies since that say depriving the brain and whatnot can lead to you've got a higher chance of being KO'd and ill health down the line, damage to the organs and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. 
And again, we don't really know the full long-term effects because they have been linked to potentially enhancing CTE as well. Because obviously, if you're draining yourself down, depriving yourself of water and therefore oxygen, um, you're obviously also enhancing the damage you receive, both short-term and long-term, when you get Absolutely. smacked in the head by somebody. Um, mm -hmm. But there are other benefits to fighting at your natural weight as well, you know. It's kind of known that a lot of fighters that certainly have a massive weight cut, they spend large parts of their camp cutting weight instead of skill building. So if weight cutting was eliminated entirely, we could see fighters operating at their optimum best. So it may actually increase the quality of the product we actually see. Now, a lot of this is conjecture, and I will say this. What I'd kind of like to see is maybe see a smaller promotion trialing it out and to impose mm -hmm. like the following rules. So you could have fighters have, to, fighters have to weigh in as they usually do, say the day before. And then to prove they're not cheating or rehydrating for a fight, they need to be weighed just before the bout. And then you can then have a penalty system depending on what happens in between them. Now, if people are being true to their word and fighting it there, you'd obviously have to have some kind of window so you could maybe say there's a certain amount of weight that you're allowed to get, gain because sometimes people will weigh in on a certain night and then they go and have a massive steak that that evening and then suddenly they weigh 10 pounds more. You know, it's a very, very yeah. difficult thing to gauge. But um, so I wouldn't want it to be a case of we're weighing on fight night and then fights are getting cancelled because that would be a problem in itself. You know, we have a lot, a lot of last minute cancellations as it is. Um, and you could, you know, it could be determined what the sanctions could be regarding that. But as I said, if if people are going in at their natural weight, it should be something that doesn't happen too regularly. Um, ultimately, I kind of see it being a miss, but it could be a unique selling point for like an up and coming promotion and like an interesting yeah. experiment, like at best, if you're like an up and coming promotion that is trying to make traction, you could have that as your selling point and say, look, we're abolishing weight cutting. And we just want people who are coming in there, fighting at their natural weight and focusing on skill building and then seeing where it can go. And I think that could be potentially mm -hmm. something interesting. But as far as banning it from the sport, it's never it never should happen. It's never going to happen. And from that perspective, I kind of like things the way they are, as long as things are regulated properly. True. And, and I think that um, you know, your point as far as like other organizations uh, experimenting with that to see what works. That's where I feel like the UFC as a sport, you know, as being the the leader in the MMA space kind of fails the other organizations or the sport as a whole by not allowing uh, or, or partnering with other organizations to uh, push things forward, to experiment on rules um, to make the sport safer and better for the athletes. Um, I think that there's a reason that the UFC is still labeled as a promotion versus a league. And this is one of the instances that really highlights why they are labeled that because their uh, motivation is more about profit. And I understand that, but mm -hmm. if you, if you better the sport, then you'll make a better profit. The NFL is a, is a, uh, an example of that the major league major league baseball is an example of that and using major league baseball as an example they um, experiment with their minor leagues for rules just like these they experimented with them for instant replay which we talked about in previous uh, on part one and they experimented with a, a variety of things that they brought into the major leagues um, that that helped the game as a whole and if the UFC wants to better the product, then they should partner with these other organizations to experiment on things like this, on things like mm -hmm. instant replay, um, a, a variety of other things that will make the sport better. So there's a way to to make this work because obviously weight cutting is an issue. People have died from weight cutting. Um, they need to police these things. Um, and I think that there is probably a happy medium uh, when it comes to this to make sure that people aren't cutting weight that's going to be detrimental to their health so yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that yeah absolutely i think like what 
And again, as sometimes, you know, we do come across as people who are like bloodthirsty monsters who just want to see carnage and, and destruction. But I think most most of us would agree that, again, you know, ultimately what we want is for the safety of the fighters to be paramount before our entertainment. And that can be something that's very difficult to admit from time to time because it sounds like an obvious thing to say, but like we do forget that this that there's a lot of the human side involved and there are you know mm-hmm. people that have families and there are there are people that are willing to once they've dedicated themselves to something this dangerous they're willing to go to whatever lengths it takes to be successful and to make money from it and a lot of them do have the attitude of well it doesn't matter how much damage i do to myself in the next x y and z um as long as i get that modicum of success now and that's something that this would help to eradicate yeah and plus you know what that it, it, it really protects people's careers um you brought up um the damage that cutting weight can do to somebody's brain by reducing the fluid around it i mean we've seen that in when tj dillashaw he did everything possible to cut weight in, including using epo and still got knocked out viciously and it's because of that uh, fluid that he lost around his brain and he, he hasn't been the same look at cody garbrandt he went down to 125 and he hasn't been the same since so these things happen and we're seeing them play out in real time and if they want to protect these fighters to make sure that they're doing the best thing for their health then these things should be in place absolutely absolutely i think we're in full agreement on that all right so we'll go on to topic two which is and this is a really big one this is one i'm really really looking forward to The question being posed now is, should judges be forced to justify their actions as part of the post-media scrum? So I'm going to have a quick crack at this first. Um, This should be interesting. This is going to be interesting. (laughs) This is, we we, we literally talk about this while we're off air and we've gone in. So I'm actually, this was something we were naturally going to do one one way or another. Um... I think it's time for this to happen. I think we do have to start making judges accountable. Um, Now, the only way I see it working is if it becomes a mandatory thing for every event. So it's something that they come out and do. And if they aren't appearing live, which is something that can cause contention, because I can understand why judges would maybe not want to have their faces out there and to discuss certain things when the chances are that when people have, as we said, their favorite fighters lost and they're particularly angry or they've lost large amounts of money. I mean, Drake loses houses on a weekly basis at this point. He he doesn't even care about money the way he's throwing it away. No, he must be. I mean, uh, it's got to the point with him where whenever I I look out for his betting habits now so I can literally do the fucking opposite. Yes. The guy's <laughs> so bad. The guy's made the guy's made me rich. You know, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. Um but yeah, so if they aren't appearing live, what I would recommend maybe as an alternative is that they maybe need to write up a report explaining their actions that can be published and then potentially scrutinized later. Because I'm not really mm-hmm. about starting witch hunts here. I don't want judges having their houses burnt to the ground and their kids harassed at school. Um Maybe they deserve it a little bit, but I don't really want that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been watching this sport for a long time now, and maybe I'm paranoid. And I'd like to kind of throw that question to you as a kind of a sub thing. Um, mm-hmm. Does it feel like it's happening more and more now, where we just get ridiculous decisions on a more regular basis? Is that something you feel like you're seeing? It it, it feels that way. And I, and I don't know if it's because, you know, now... I run a YouTube channel and, you know, I'm paying attention even more so than when I was just writing, but Mm. it it still feels like there's way more contentious decisions than there was before. I don't know what's going on, but it might be that there's more cards now as well. I mean, we're getting, we are getting cards more regularly. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. It's very, Um, very true. But also like I'm. I, I kind of have felt all along like the whole thing's a little bit of a conspiracy because with the amount of money that goes into gambling and betting, for example, I mean, literally hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more, are pumped into gambling on a weekly basis. And I've always yeah. felt like there must be 
somebody just looking at how all of it's going on and that they put decisions in certain situations to make sure that they're at least making an X amount of profit every weekend, mm -hmm. which seems like a sinister thing to suggest. But with like the whole James Krause thing and all that stuff going on, there's like and how quickly they jumped on the betting lines of that changing. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It, was, it seems to it me like fishy. it's been very it was fishy. Um but I think I think ultimately what could really come from it is a really good thing is I'd like to understand what judges are seeing and why they scored it that way because sometimes I wonder as a viewer if because I'm like you like we said many many times if I like a particular fighter or if I bet money on a fighter I can't help but be biased sometimes by what I'm watching because maybe I'm looking out for things that I want to see my fighter doing in a certain situation it's very difficult to not be influenced in that situation so it would be at least interesting to see all right what as a judge what were you seeing and why did you score it that way and then if it turns out that they have justified it great we accept it we move on if it turns out that they're talking out of their bomb holes and they're just completely going against what the scoring criteria is supposed to say then it gives us an opportunity to then educate that judge so that they don't make that mistake in the future mm -hmm. or if they keep doing it have them removed from the sport completely and somebody else brought in because i just think it's i think it's something that is so, again we're going back to the same tired thing it's like forget the fact that people are losing money i mean i try to forget it but you know it's i bring it up so often <laughs> that it's very clearly at the it, forefront it sounds, of my mind sounds very personal <laughs> it does it's it's some um, i've had some genuine I've, I've genuinely gone to bed after some cards and just been like that son of a bitch <laughs> and I, I don't need the money but i'm just like it's you know when you just feel robbed and it's just yeah. makes me genuinely mad um it, it goes back down to the careers being ruined again yeah it's just people like like uh, the, the example when we i know that this is a bad example in some ways, but it's the first one that jumped into my mind when we had Corey Santagan and Marlon Vera. Now, obviously, Marlon Vera didn't win the fight. Mm -hmm. But again, you're looking at a situation where, I mean, that fight to me could not have been more one-sided in terms of how it was scored. Mm -hmm. And it could have been a potential thing where Again, Corey is sent bundling back down the ladder again if he loses to somebody like Chio, despite absolutely dominating him in every measurable way for a five yep. round fight. And he's just a bla I mean, they see, like, it's like we, we said, there seems to be one every card, at least one. And it's getting a little bit suspicious to me. And I think mm -hmm. the fact that the UFC is, you even got Dana White coming out at the end in press conferences and saying, that's one of the worst robberies I've ever seen in block and then not doing anything about it yeah. annoys me. So it's true. It's true. Yeah. Hmm. So I think that I do think the judges should be held accountable for the decisions that they make. Um, however, I would want to put um, a layer between them and the outcry of the public. What the NBA does and this is again me stealing from other sports what the nba does or did was they used to issue the two minute report and so uh the nba uh the the um referees as a whole would issue a last two minute report where they would explain some of the decisions that were made during those last two minutes and i think that they could do a very similar thing where it comes from the commission even though it actually is, you know, Mike Bell's um, um, his decision on what was made. Mm -hmm. But the commission as a whole gets behind it and says, this is the decision was made. This is why the decision was made. And the commission yeah. supports that decision. Or this is the, the decision was made. And the commission believes that that was wrong. And the judge has been reprimanded or fined or whatever be due to this decision so that way everybody knows that the commission is looking out for the fighters and the sport as a whole the judges are being held accountable this is the reason that they made that decision so now everybody knows what happened and it also protects 
the judge from having to face uh, a scrum of reporters who are going to pick them apart if they made a decision that was questionable and the judges aren't they don't know how to handle that sort of thing so no i i think that I think they should be held accountable. I think it should be in that fashion. So it gives a little bit of a buffer um, between them, but I think it should be something that's done by every commission after an event. And it should be in the contract when um, these judges are assigned that, okay, Herb, Mark, Chris, like these, you know, are some of the top uh, judges. You're going to have to be held accountable in writing for what what decisions were made period mm -hmm. yeah yeah no i think it's um i think again thinking thinking along similar lines like i i think that protection should be offered and i think because again this is something people get very very angry about and, and rightfully so as, rightfully, rightfully so. so yeah i'm I mean, still mad about the kai car france fight I'm still mad I, you know that's the example that just popped into my mind about i'm like i should have used that one why am I talking That's about Corey Sandhagen who got robbed in a win? Like, <laughs> losing my mind. Kai Car that, was the, that was the worst one. Dude, he should have been the, the one, one that was uh, fighting, you know, to, you know, for a number one contender spot. Funnily Even enough, though, though did, did you did you hear that? Al I, they were going to do Albazi Moreno, right? Yeah, he fell a out. Appar yeah. yeah, apparently, yeah, Moreno's fighting. Pantoja again, not Pantoja. Sorry, Roy Val. Yep. Again. Yeah. Great. Fight. Which is a, a, a which is a cool rematch, considering the fact that Roy Val got hurt in the first one, so they really didn't fight the first time. Yeah. But um, Flyweight has got so many rematches going on. It's just yeah, it's, just get, it's getting a bit over the top. Yeah. We really yeah. need we really need Manel to win on the weekend. Jesus, we need that man to win on the weekend. And he, you, you see, he missed weight. I did not see he that. Missed, he missed weight by oh, three and man. a half pounds. So he's doing himself a disservice. Oh, no. now he, and he's fighting a dangerous dude in Matthias uh, Nicolau. Like, I really rate Nicolau. He's such I, a good I, fighter. I'm starting to think Nicolau's going to win that fight. Damn. Yeah, that that is... I did not. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to look at the weigh-ins yet. So that's upsetting to hear that is. I'm very disappointed to hear that. I still want him to yeah. win because I think the... I think the guy is absolutely hilarious. So, like he really grew on me last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Uh, and I think flyweight really needs that, you know, just to yeah. have some personality injected into it because the skill level was so there. Mm -hmm. and just having somebody yeah. who's going to talk immense amounts of shit would be would be absolutely beautiful. Anyway, as always, we've kind of got on a. He is that guy. He is that. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really enjoy him. Seeing him start like I, I sometimes wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is run over to my computer and just see him yelling abuse at Israel Adesanya and telling him, calling him a pussy and, you know, being half <laughs> yeah. his size and and, and, put, and and not just saying it, but sticking his chest out right next to him. Yeah. Just, I'll, I'll never forget that. Yeah, that was crazy. Beautiful moment. Yeah, y'all have a, a similar enemy. <laughs> we do. I think, that, you know, you're at the enemy of my enemy is my friend and all of that. <laughs> or whatever it yeah. is, however the expression goes. All right, now this next topic is again one that I'm very excited to talk about. Um, and again, spoiler alert, I can do this again because again, it's a video that might be coming up before this one. I'm going to be redoing a, a series about this. And it comes down to the boxing versus MMA debate that rages on on Twitter on a daily basis. Um, so the question being, has MMA finally taken over as the as the global leader of combat sports at the expense of boxing which has obviously been number one for decades the floor is yours this one is so difficult this one is so difficult um i am going to say yes but it there's Something that recently happened makes me waver on that. Um, uh -huh. I say yes, uh, in part because I believe that um, a as a whole, when it comes across like uh, the amount of fighters, that amount, the amount of relevant events, the amount of uh, people that have been pushed into the limelight, 
MMA proceeds boxing right now. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to individual fighters getting the most, we just saw that Francis Ngannou is going to fight Anthony Joshua and he's going to make $20 million. He made 10 How do you million. feel about that fight, by the way? I think, on the subject? I think that uh, Francis has a great opportunity to beat Anthony Joshua. Mm -hmm. A great opportunity. If Anthony, jo it depends on who Anthony Joshua is when he comes comes in. It, he's going to have to want to get into the face of danger. If he plays it safe, mm -hmm. and if he if he comes in as Anthony Joshua, I think that he loses. If he comes in as AJ, I think he wins. It's mm -hmm. two different fighters. If he comes in, not necessarily reckless, but as a calculated assassin, I think that he could win. Mm -hmm. But if he comes in trying to point fight, Francis is going to destroy that man. Yeah, I but, agree. I agree. But because of that, that that's what makes me feel like it's still an interesting debate because of the top level of boxing far out sees the top level of MMA from an earnings perspective. Um, but as a whole, if we're looking at the um, there's there's world champion boxers that we have never heard of, but there's there's yeah. Even Alexander Pantoja, which I would say is probably the least um, known um, um, champion that we have, people know who he is. So yeah, yeah. he's not driving Uber anymore. I'll say that much. <laughs> so um, I think that they have overtaken boxing, but at the top level, it's still it's still a boxing world. Yeah. Um, you're going to be surprised by this answer. But, and I, I don't really like admitting this outright, you know, I've probably had more arguments calling boxing fans simpletons that hate MMA on Twitter more than anything else I've done on that platform. Like, I've had so many arguments with boxing fans that just, you know, have such a derogatory view of MMA. But I would probably argue that globally, boxing is still the bigger sport technically, but there are a few caveats to that. Um, as there always are with me, they should they should probably call me Captain Caveat at this point. I've always got like a little a little rule to just uh, undermine my own my own point. Um, I would argue actually that MMA has the bigger hardcore fan base and the reg and a regular watching fan base, if that makes sense. Um, I think it's because of the regularity the regularity of the cards, the way that they interact with the product, etc. Um, I think boxing fans that are hardcores for me are more smaller in number at this point and that the majority of cards are not as big in terms of exposure and interactions with the public and on social media. Um, I do think that when the biggest names are more involved though, you know, when you get your AJs, you get your Canelos, people like that, that's when you get more casual fans drawn in. And I think part of what that, the reason behind that is that a lot of people who don't watch MMA on a regular basis still kind of see it as a very barbaric kind of sport. You know, or it's kind of seen as, oh, they've gone too far, they can do whatever they want. They imagine a limb being broken in half or blood splattering everywhere. Whereas boxing is kind of seen more as sophisticated and gentlemanly and more digestible to the general public. True. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it. But I think as time goes on, because I, I, I'll be honest with you, when I before I first got into MMA, I was a pure boxing fan and I didn't really watch MMA. And I had that very view that I'm talking about. I thought, nah, this is, I don't want to say that I'm a, I'm a bit of a bitch. I mean, <laughs> I'll let the general public come to their own conclusions on that one. I've probably left a few breadcrumbs that I shouldn't have regarding that. <laughs> um, but I think, I think what will happen is the more and more that MMA is consumed as a sport and that you know that opinion of it as very brutal and base in a way um it's going to dissipate the more and more it happens because i simply think that mma is a more exciting thing to watch the cards are better the promotion of the sport is better the way that um weight classes are very streamlined is much better like in boxing there are so many champions so many weight classes so many organizations so many things going on that it just gets completely diluted to the point where i don't even know who the best in the world is at certain points 
um, which you could say is a very similar problem that happens in in MMA with a few major organizations around the world. But I do think it's a matter of time before it becomes undeniable that MMA is the global leader. It will be so obvious to the point where you can't even argue argue it. But I would say right now, as of now, because of that ability to pull in those casual fan bases whenever you put a big event on, I would say probably not now. We've got a bigger hardcore fan base, but as far as the smaller casual armchair observers go that might watch two or three cards a year, I think boxing still has that wider appeal. I can, I mean, it's easier to understand. It's definitely easier to understand. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you got to do the grandma test. And if you go to a grandma, like, what is she going to understand more? And it's going to be boxing. Um, when the when a fight hits the floor, that's when everybody who is not used to it is going to be like, I Go, do groans. not know what's happening. Yeah. Why are they humping each other? And yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, yes. you know, the only people that, that hump people on the floor like that is, you know, Izzy that one time and maybe John Fitch. So, like, we don't see that. That's You don't understand what you're seeing. And I think the UFC with their commentators do a great job of educating the viewer on what they're seeing um i say all the time that that i'm um, a, a bjj black belt um in the joe rogan uh academy of bjj so <laughs> that's why i understand what's going on because of what he said and what other people have said so um that this is a sport that you learn by watching um from boxing mm-hmm. you mean did he hit him or did he did he not <laughs> so <And that's, laughs> that really is what it comes down to his he punched his face he didn't punch his face back here's the winner yeah doesn't always go that way but no, it doesn't <laughs> it is nice to have that simplicity about it though as well that's true and i think that I, I can understand you know your point in that for sure i think that um where mma is making a lot of ground is because of all the different disciplines that are prevalent in different areas like wrestling in russia Mm -hmm. uh kickboxing in um in some of the european areas um in uh, thailand you got muay thai all those things are prevalent in mma so it makes it easy for them to digest what they're seeing even if the fight goes to a different area they understand okay i know the guy that i'm supporting when he gets to the muay thai range when i see um uh, rafael faziv in certain areas i know what he's going to do and i understand that so that's that's where mma is going to if they haven't already moved past boxing because of that level of understanding from the different areas of the world yeah no yeah again again i completely agree it's just it's like the access points as well isn't it you've just got even if you're, as, as you said, if you're somebody who is a Muay Thai person, it, it sometimes can just simply be interesting to see, all right, will my style work against somebody who's going to grab my leg and start trying to go for my bum hole? You know, <laughs> will it work Yeah. in a real situation? And then you very much find out that, okay, maybe I need to add a few wrinkles to my skill set to, to protect my virginity, you know, so <laughs> it's... Um, That's important. You want to protect that. <laughs> Very. You really want to keep. You really want to keep hold of that one. Yeah. I'll tell you that now. That was. That'd be good. I mean, no offense to anybody who uh, enjoys those sorts of activities. If that's what you like, that. that's what you like. Hats off to you. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. You're, you're better <laughs> man than me. I don't know. <laughs> we, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't see this coming, did we? We never do. Just the segues we somehow end up getting to is, is uh. wild. Yeah, add that off the list. Um. <laughs> You know, well, I was before before I head into the next question, I was actually going to include a question that brings up trans athletes. I don't know how you feel about talking about that. Oh man, but it is I, something I'm, I am hundred hundred percent open to, to talking about that because I have. All right, ugh. I'm gonna throw that onto the next one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little note of that and say right for segment three, we'll chuck that one on there because I've got some very tuned strong for opinions that. about that. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Now that really want to see some people go after us this is this is a sure way to do it so Mm -hmm. um all right so topic four this is kind of an interesting one to me i'm not sure how you feel about it um we may have different different opinions on this again again just to the viewing public who don't know how we set these up we have no conversation whatsoever about 
we give each other the topics and then we just say right we'll jump on and we'll people can probably tell that we're freestyling this stuff you know some of the wild segments and stuff we come out on the wild segues we make that's what makes it good um that is and i it feel it feels much more enjoyable to do i just want to say as a sidebar Mm -hmm. um but yeah this topic in particular i think is an interesting one uh should the ufc start cross promoting with other major promotions um i believe it is my turn to go first i think on this one it is um all right so again there's so many different ways you can look at this somebody i mean sometimes these questions are deliberately loaded but um (laughs) I'm going to talk purely as a fan here and not from the perspective of the UFC enhancing their business, which I also think, by the way, could be an element to it. Um, I mean, if it was strictly about business, I probably would have a different answer. But as I've said many times on this channel, I don't really care about how much money the UFC is making. Um... Now, I don't really watch as many regional promotions as I probably should, and that really is on my list of things to do this year. Uh, but I do watch every major organization, as as you know, as as you do yourself. You know, I watch like the KSWs, the Cage Warriors, One, Bellator, etc. As painful as it can be sometimes, uh, I tend to try and absorb as much as I possibly can. Um, so, but I think like, you know, when I made that video talking about who has the best champions between like Bellator PFL and the UFC I think it really accentuated my perspective on this like as a purist and a general MMA fan I would love to know at any given time who the best fighter is in the world in a particular weight class at a particular time I mean I'm somebody I mean if you if you saw that video I'm somebody who I think I covered, what was it, eight or nine champions. I can't remember what the exact number of it was. Um, I think it was nine. But I, I didn't make... I think it was nine, yeah. So I, I didn't make any... I didn't plan anything going into that video. I simply addressed it as sort of saying, hey, Bellator's got some good stuff too. And actually surprised myself going through it that I had several of their champions as potentially being better than the champions they have in the UFC. And I wasn't expecting that outcome. Yeah. I mean it was I'd say I'd say like I can't remember specifically what the numbers were, but I could safely say it was at least half, which kind of illustrates my point completely. Um I I do see champions in one and Bellator that are arguably the best right now from what I can see from just my my viewpoint. And I was looking at topology the other day when I was making a list. Mm-hmm. And I give you an example. Um you're you're obviously fully aware of patchy mix and what an amazing fighter he is absolutely now on the unofficial rankings he is below ricky simon and jonathan martinez no like that to me at worst and i'm not even capping on this one i would have him second at worst yeah. and i mean at worst like if somebody said top five, maybe I'd, I'd accept that opinions and all that. But to have him behind Ricky Simon and Jonathan Martinez, just because he is in, he is outside of the UFC, is mental to me. So, so I want cross promotion as a fan, purely to say, you know what, this is who the best is right now. And I mean, the UFC will spout on about from a business perspective, they don't want to do cross cross promotional cards because. They don't want to elevate another brand. But just imagine what the business would be like if once a year you had an entire card, even if it was International Fight Week at the end of the year, whatever, where you had a card purely champion versus champion, every division going all the way down the card from top to bottom. Are you telling me that that wouldn't be the biggest thing of the year every year Mm -hmm. in terms of the eyeballs that would bring to this? If you could say, forget all the hype of UFC 300 and how they've messed that nonsense up. Imagine being able to say every year you're going to get the Bellator flyweight champion, which a division they don't have right now, but I'll get to that later, versus the UFC flyweight champion. Yeah. Like, and then have that at the end of the year as the last cherry to say, "Bam, this is who the, this is who ended the year as the best in every single division." I don't see from a fa- like from a fan perspective 
that would be insane. And if you did it with somebody like one, imagine the demographic that you're bringing in. Yeah, it's true. If you're doing a, if you're doing a, a champion versus champion, if you're just a UFC and you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm not doing anything with Bellator, but you went to one and you were like, let's do this. Like the amount of eyeballs that would be on those cards and then the crossover you'd get, the increase in fan base you'd get would be insane. That's true. Um, Again, I'm speaking idealistically here. I'm speaking as a fan. Mm-hmm. I would love to see the UFC co- cross promote. <clears throat> I would love to see it happen because then, as fun as it is to sometimes have those debates of, oh, they're the best in the division and you never get to really find out. It's just, sometimes it's nice to just be able to endlessly talk shit about who the best is. It's true. I want to know. I want to know. You know what? From... It's never going to happen, but I want to know. Yeah. I understand the the trepidation from the UFC side and and you you alluded to that when you said that um, you know you're speaking from the fans perspective and not the the UFC's Mm -hmm. perspective and obviously the fear is from the fact that well one they've they've tried this before and it didn't work out Mm -hmm. you remember Mm -hmm. when Chuck Liddell went into pride and he was supposed to be representing the UFC and what happened got knocked out so and that did not look good for the UFC. It yeah. didn't. Dana was like, never again. And that's kind of where we've left that. But but I would argue that they can actually make this to where this is lucrative for everyone, no matter who wins, as long as the UFC doesn't lose every single fight. They have this thing, and I'm sure you've heard of it, called the UEFA Champions League. And in that league, they find out who it's is like, the best. Yeah. And if you if you um, have, you know, these people, these teams or in this case, these fighters to find out who is indeed the best at that time, you can have something that is monumental, that makes so much money. Um, And I think that the UFC, Bellator, PFL one would all benefit from having something like that, because after they have that. They go back to their individual leagues and those championships still mean something. Now, mm-hmm. you'll have, you know, situations where people from the same gym uh, are probably champions or maybe people who are, um, you know, almost related, you know, a la Islam and uh, Usman uh, Nurmagomedov in the same division. They're not mm-hmm. going to fight each other, but mm-hmm. but maybe they will because of the gravity of that situation. Who knows? But I think that you can actually mm-hmm. do that from a fan's perspective. This is like this would be our Super Bowl. This would be massive. Absolutely. And I personally wouldn't do it every year. I would actually do it every other year to make it even more massive. But like a sort of a bicentennial yes. World Cup or something. Yeah, that's what I would do. That would be sweet. I'd accept that. I'd do it every four years. I'd do it every decade if it if it had it. Well, maybe not every decade. So that's going too far. I mean, I thought about every four years, but maybe every two years would be like kind of a happy medium. Um, and you're catching people in their primes and whatnot. Yeah. And you can pre- you can adequately prepare for it as well. And then that adds something to their resume. Because, I mean, just imagine if you looked at somebody's resume and they were like a two-time um, champion of champions uh, belt holder. Like, come on. like. And it also it adds weight to the world to the word world or the monica world champion yes yes like there's no disputing undeniable at that point there's no disputing and it doesn't it doesn't have to be a competition it's like you said it doesn't have to be a competition between it the pie is big enough for them all to eat yeah Mm -hmm. like it genuinely is especially in the case of the ufc doing this with one because you're literally getting two massive coexisting but separate fan bases yep. that would be instantly exposed to one another mm-hmm. It'd be huge yeah it like, would be huge that would be massive i think that that would, that should be something that they should really look into and the ufc they're not going to lose on this and i'm not talking about not going to lose as far as fights they're going to lose fights the patchy fights, yeah. patchy mix <laughs> is the best in the world in my opinion i but, believe but if you look at you know the entirety of it and you broke it down in that video i I do believe that the ufc has the best uh champions for the most part Mm -hmm. but there's a challenge to be made and and but i think that from a financial perspective oh they would not lose because of all the advertising that's going to go into that um Mm -hmm. all of 
the star building that would go into that. And us as, as media, we wouldn't lose either because we have so much to cover, oh, no. so much to look at. Like they should. I want who do we need content. to talk to? Oh, I just, <laughs> who do we need to talk yeah, we to, need to to do that? Bro, I, the thing is, yeah, I, I, I genuinely believe that this won't happen as long as Dana's in charge. I think Dana is a big obstacle to this kind of thing happening. True. And I think I think there's a lot of things we'll lose when he goes because as much as I think of the guy, the guy is a uh, Satan. Um, there's like I don't know. There's I feel like he's he's a roadblock in front of a lot of things. That he could is be amazing. He is. I think that things will change when he leaves, but but a lot of people. I don't know if we'll ever get this. A lot of people look at you know individual fighters like Connor or Ronda or Brock. As being the stars of the UFC, mm. Dana White is the star of the UFC, and he oh, always 100%. has been. He always has been, mm. and until he leaves, he always will be. That's the star of the mm. UFC, and I think that when he leaves, I think that Hunter is going to be the one to replace him, and I think that things will open up a little bit because Hunter is more open to business opportunities um, than Dana. And he hasn't, is. and he hasn't burned, a, and he hasn't burned a whole load of bridges as well. True true i think things will change and I, th I think that some things will change for the worst but for the most part i think it'll things will start to to move forward a little bit when hunter is in place but yeah we, we got a little bit of time before hunter that, that's, that's gonna it. that's gonna be another question i need to add into the docket for next time who who would make the best i mean it's not really a yell and all question but or maybe it could be where it's like would the ufc be better off about dana white i might chuck that one on the docket as well yeah so, yeah, so we've got two already. We got two. Just need three so more. I think just unfold like that. <laughs> um, all right, that was a. I, I, yeah, that was that was a nice one to get into. I really enjoyed that. Um, all right, so the last one, and this is again for you to tackle head on first. We've never really discussed this ever, so I'm quite interested to see what your perspective is on this one. Um, do you think that tough should finally be put? out to pasture into mm. retirement what do you reckon um yes but there's always a caveat Th this is like the story of caveats i think that it should uh -huh. be because that format doesn't work anymore um in the sense of people just don't look at um reality tv the same as that people still look at reality tv you know don't get don't get it twisted but they don't look at it in this and digest it in the same manner as they did before. So I think that the stakes would need to be higher. And I think that if again, going back to that 165 division or a women's atom weight division, if we're instituting a new division, yes, absolutely bring it in because you Get need it to, done in one swoop. Yes. Because you, now you've introduced all these fighters. Now the fight, the fights are going to be a lot more interesting because now we've built up their personality and we can now identify with these people. You remember when, um, they had the ultimate fighter and they had Angela Hill, Tisha Torres, um, Jessica Penne, that like, like that was a really good one. And we've, learned who those people are and that's rolled right into the, their careers and we follow them the entire time because we know who they are like you know Ra Raquel Pennington and Tisha Torres got married like you know what I'm saying like we know who these people are because of the ultimate fighter but that doesn't work every time I don't remember who was on the ultimate fighter the last time with Connor and uh, Michael Chandler I don't remember none of those dudes no more I, I can only remember two of them because they fought at an actual in an actual card and that's case so in point. Um, it's just it's not it's not the it. same it's not the same because of the stakes and if you're bringing in a um a a ultimate fighter to establish a division yes i'm all mm. for it but if you're just doing it just to be doing it nah we're not it's not going to have that same weight so i think it should be in retirement or at least on hiatus until a relevant situation arises which establishing a new division is the best um type of thing that you could use it for so i have like a clear purpose behind it mm -hmm. well i can i can get behind that um we're again thinking along very very similar lines like i think tough has been 
very, 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 very bad for a while. Like awful for ages. Um, to be honest though, I've never really been a massive fan of it. Um, which is kind of odd because, you know, at its best, it has elements that I believe when you combine, like even individually, I enjoy them immensely. Mm. You know, you've got the fly on the wall thing of how fighters learn and how they interact with one another. You've got the drama that goes in between them. And obviously you learn more about their personalities in depth. Um, you know, I mean, you've got idiots locked in a house together that are there to fight each other. I mean, what can go wrong? You know, <laughs> um, but I think what, again, and you alluded to this beautifully, it's not what it, it's not what it was that it's raw best anymore. Yeah. They've completely changed how the format of it is completely. But having said that, I would keep it around because, again, as you alluded to, it's been responsible for launching so many different stars, um, and it's been an opportunity when it's been at its best to learn about. A fighter's mindset, the things that they go through. Um, I just think that the problem is, is that it needs to be done better. Yeah. Like it's been done so lazily now, and mm -hmm. it's so formulaic. And the one thing it doesn't do anymore that it used to do so well is I don't feel like it really focuses on the fighters as much anymore. It seems to be more about showcasing or building beef between two existing UFC fighters that. Yes. Are ultimately or not ultimately going to fight, which I think is such a waste of the platform in itself. Mm -hmm. Like you know, so much time was spent focusing on silly not nonsense. You know, like maybe the odd spat every now and then, and then the, it was mostly the spats between the judges that was focused on more than anything else, mm -hmm. and not went on. For, like we we didn't see in depth training, which would have been like a really nice insight. You know, you'd see like the odd 20, 30 second clip. Of Conor McGregor saying, do this, do that. I'm talking about obviously the most recent one. Mm -hmm. And you, even with Michael Chandler, who apparently is very, is a very um, well rounded coach, we didn't really get to see that in depth. Yeah. And, I, but, and as casual, as, as like, well, I say casual, as people who aren't in a gym every day and just fans, we don't get to see what that process is like. Mm -hmm. So it should be an opportunity to see that on like a regular basis. And I mean, the way that the format was last time, I mean, not even McGregor could keep the ratings up once. I mean, it started off obviously very well. There was a decent, it didn't do astronomical numbers compared to what it would have done in the past. But as soon as people had digested one or two episodes, it was very clear that the viewership was falling off more and more and more with every passing episode because it's just dull. Mm hmm. So I think like the format itself and the concept behind it itself is a good idea. As you said, there are people who watch reality TV and it's an opportunity. Any opportunity to get to know fighters better, I'm all for. Yep. Like, but now the pacing is terrible. The format is terrible. And I think ultimately, if they're going to keep it around, they need to handle it more respectively. Sorry, more respectfully. Or at the very least, go back to the things that made it good in the first place. Yeah. You know? Yep. I Focus mean, on up and coming fighters and give them a platform. Formulaic is is the best word for the it. Word. It's just like mm. we see them riding in the van, then we get a slow motion uh, shot of them getting out the van. They walk out the same door with the same coaches on so the you same. You saying side. this even? I'm like, like um, it's the same shot of. I mean. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm I'm sure I'm not the only person that just fast forwarded to the fight itself. Everybody did that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. That's what I'm saying. I don't know anything about these people because it's just same episode, rinse and repeat. Yep. Get to the fight. Mm -hmm. Might yeah. as well just you know get just have fights. Because if they and then and They're if they just that. have fights. Now it's Dana White's contender series, which is what we all watch. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the contender series is something that is going to grow as well. Yeah, I think it will get more and more popular. Yeah, that's that's really. I mean, there's a reason that that one's doing so well on Tuesdays. You know, during that uh, block of time during the year, we know that we're going to get having that the, we're going to get an up and coming fight card, like. Yeah. That's a good card. It's like a bonus every week. It is. It is. 
because when you when you break it down it's like we've got so many co- i think i counted because i did again uh, doing the research for the ufc and bellator thing that's coming up i went wild on that one that was the one i was telling you about that i really want you to look out for because i went to i went to some really weird places on that one <laughs> like it got weird like, i went i went rogue <laughs> like it got it got mad it's, it's my it's my most like out there video yet when it's done it's gonna be white it's gonna be wild but yeah it's exactly what you're saying i mean i'm so um there are so many good things that this this organization does and does well uh, and i feel like something that really was their bread and butter in terms of getting them to this platform they've really neglected and disrespected now and it just feels like an advert for everything else they're doing yep. and it's a shame because i think the potential is still there i still think something really amazing can be made of it mm-hmm. just needs to be treated more respectfully yeah and 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 i don't understand like i wouldn't understand why you would have the contender series and the ultimate fighter in the same year because they both service the same purpose the same ends so yeah. like why would you have both that's why I say you should use it. You should dust it off for, for very specific things. If you want to infuse, if if it's widely known that a particular division is very, very top heavy and we need to introduce some more stars into it, then maybe you dust it off then. If you're creating a new division, you definitely need to do it. Um, things like that. Um, I think those are reasons. You need to have a clear reason that you communicate to the public uh, with on why you're having the ultimate fighter not just we're having the ultimate fighter and these coaches don't like each other like that's not enough no no i completely agree they need to again it wasn't broke so i don't know why they started tampering with it so viciously it's just again and I, again i wasn't a major i wasn't a major watcher of it really i never but I enjoyed it back then and now I don't even I literally got I'm not I'm, I'm sounding I got pretty much I've watched snippets of the latest season but that's what it was I can literally tell you I mean when did it happen last year June or whatever was it I, don't, I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. I don't so remember fuck all about it bro I don't remember, I, I don't remember it pretty much remember Connor putting his hands around Chandler's neck and yeah, it, yeah during the face off and then I remember that that was you, it or kind of grabbing what, his face or you do what you told and that was in the first episode <laughs> oh was it yeah holy shit well i did not realize See, that's what i'm saying that says it all mm-hmm. absolute abomination so yeah just handle it respectfully people that's all we but want. uh shout out to my boy spencer kite because he he has to you know he's watching those and, and writing up pieces for ufc.com um recapping really? those yeah yeah it's, it was it was it was so fun talking to that guy like i i genuinely felt because i i don't know that much about him when i got into the or i didn't know much about him mm-hmm. when we got into the um into the freeway conversation we had and like as soon as he started talking i was like you know when you're kind of like yeah this guy really knows yeah i felt it's weird because i went from not really knowing much about him to being nervous hearing him speak he knows what he's talking about he knows and i don't know what it was was interesting and when he started him. agreeing with me i was like my my head started to balloon it <laughs> right back to where it was before it's like i shrank down to like a little pee and yeah. then as soon as he was like yeah frankie's talking some sense there i was like i do know what i'm talking about yeah man oh. i i think that uh um, good feeling you, you don't give in, you don't give yourself enough credit man like you definitely know the sport you know what you're talking about and that's why you know, it's always enjoyable for me to jump on these with you because I know that your uh, opinions and your thoughts are coming from a very thoughtful place. So, you know what you're speaking about. And I knew that that was going to be a conversation that would be fruitful and helpful for whoever's mm-hmm. viewing if they don't know what they're you know, seeing. And, um, and it would be a good conversation because y'all are on that level. So, yeah, he's he, he's, the, he's yeah, it man. was fun. It was fun. I mean, it, it, again, I, you know, I echo the same things for you. Like it was, um, I've, I've said this once or twice at the beginning of some of the videos in, in prior videos we've done together, but 
for those of you who are tuning in now like you were somebody that obviously i came across in youtube you know i didn't i didn't know you two three months ago yeah. um and it was literally the the level of insight you had and the way that you presented things that for kind of forced my hand in in interacting with you because of this is turning into a big loving session now you know? this is this is nice and it's just suddenly just like kumbaya you know we're all um <laughs> it's good and I, i needed this man I needed fighting this. brings people together <laughs> and it does it does it's not just um heads rolling around and teeth in the front row and sometimes you know bromances come from nowhere so That's it's right. like look at aljo and marab it happens <laughs> yeah i'm not uh and again that, it's funny you bring him up like marab is somebody who's really grown on me as well me too. His, his, his twitter's really funny yeah he, like he's a nerd. guy's got personality he does he's got more personality than sean o'malley i would ask i would i would um suggest you know what I, before before maybe if you asked me that a year ago this time i would be like no actually <laughs> maybe so yeah it's a big it's a big problem for old sugar isn't it he, he's he is a i've seen broomsticks with more personality like genuinely he is and again i'm not hating on the dude like he's a brilliant fighter but like and the thing is i i actually kind of enjoy his stuff that's you know sort of when he does things in a contrived way you know when he makes little videos he's clearly got a good sense of humor mm -hmm. but when he's in that public sphere and he's in front of that camera and he's 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 forced to react in the moment you can see he genuinely is like shit you can just see it coming across his face where he's like he doesn't think that you know he doesn't have that quickness yeah yeah it's it's, it's of, some people have it some people don't connor is a person that has it in spades he can easily come off the cuff mm. now i think that you know some of that hard living has kind of tainted that a little bit in yeah. in recent oh, years 100%. but um but in his heyday i mean between him and chael sonnen like it's hard to get something past him without him firing back uh you know two shots to your one so but who knows well maybe we'll see somebody that that quick you know soon i, I wish Ilya Taporia was super duper fluent in English um because oh, I think Oh, he's a funny guy as well. He is and he's very sharp. He's mm. very quick-witted and I wish that came across to the American public um with his English um mm -hmm. but hopefully a good better. Sometimes the broken English makes it funnier though. It's like the more the more I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that in like a derogatory way. It's more that you know because of the way sometimes people who and i'm not just talking about generally about sometimes people who have english as a second language yeah they can be very blunt in the way that they say things because obviously because they don't have the same access to the vocabulary they mm -hmm. just go like straight for the jugular and that can be that can have really entertaining and funny results as well so yeah yep hamzad habib like mm -hmm. islam this thing yes absolutely he's hilarious Probably the, Costa he might hilarious. be the funniest person in, in the ufc but very, I might have to do a top I'm gonna again every time I talk to you I just feel like you're feeding me here like I need like <laughs> top five funniest sons of bitches in the, in the organization That's I might do the one. low I might do like the low key funny ones you know the ones that people don't really think about the ones that deserve some shine you know? yeah yeah Sadiq might have to look at that gotta have Sadiq Yusuf oh, Sadiq, on there his, his YouTube channel is fucking sensational yes it is have you seen it yes repeatedly repeatedly he has this he has this funny he, he, he kind of sounds like urkel doesn't he a little bit yeah maybe um <laughs> he does he is a, he is the troll of trolls yeah like man. so entertaining for sure yeah brilliant man this one i've I, i don't mean to sound this might sound like a very presumptuous thing this might be my favorite segment that we've done overall yeah man I, it just I keeps getting that. better it just keeps getting better those five yeah those those five topics were great and I've, we've managed to set set up for the next one which i believe i think we should do the next one on your channel because you've done me a really massive favor here yeah, yeah um, we can definitely do that so yeah do we that. do need to pump out some more content content together for your stuff but yeah i just want to say thanks again to you antoine for again taking the time it's been another sensational chat just a casual chat and again i hope you as listeners have enjoyed uh following along if you've made it to the end hats off to you Absolutely. you know well done Um, is there any one is there any last thing you want to say in terms of 
I know you talked about some future product projects in the last one, but these videos might come out a little bit past. Yeah. Is there anything else you might have missed? Um, I think uh, those are kind of the big ones, um, the ones that I mentioned before. But but just in general, um, man, make sure y'all are following on Twitter, man. Like that's on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm trying to build up that Instagram. I, I I ignore Instagram so much because it's so I commercial. Do. I don't like Instagram. It's become so like commercial, but see Twitter, I can be my trolley self to the yeah. full extent, yeah, which really makes me feel good. True, true, you know? but um, but yeah, man, y'all just follow on the different uh, social platforms, uh, and let's let's okay. let's talk, um, have conversations, debate, all those good things. Yeah. Definitely look forward to hearing from everybody. Fantastic. Well, again, we'll see you again for the next one. It's been an absolute pleasure once again with Making the Walk MMA. Um, have a great rest of the week wherever you are. Much love and comment, like, and subscribe as always. Head over to Antoine's channel and we'll see you for the next one. Yeah. See you then. Peace. <laughs>